People who separated divorced within one year of getting married. When did you know it was a mistake? Story one, not me, but my dad. He got remarried after being divorced for about five years. I would have been all for it, but he met this woman in another state on a business trip. They hit it off and he started traveling up to see her every weekend. They knew each other for only six months before getting engaged and the engagement lasted just three months. My brother and I tried to warn him about all the red flags, telling him to take his time. My dad is very well off financially, and we kept trying to explain that things were moving too quickly, that she was only in it for the money. She even moved her whole family from their hometown to the city where my dad lived, including their elderly grandmother who needed constant medical supervision. Before they were even married, the pantry was full of Whole Foods brand food instead of the local grocery store items we were used to. All new furniture and the house was repainted, all at his bride-to-be's request. The marriage lasted all of two weeks. Apparently, my dad's new bride had the gall to ask him to leave everything to her in the will and write me and my brother out. Only then did he realize she was in it for the money. The next day, he had the marriage annulled. Someday, I would like to know what it's like to fall so completely for someone that I don't recognize they are taking advantage of me. Must feel good for that instant before it all comes crashing down. To add some context, my dad was a self-made man. He started with nothing and built a successful business from the ground up. After the divorce from my mom, he threw himself into work even more, expanding his business and amassing a small f He was always cautious with money and taught us the value of hard work and saving. So, when he met this woman, it was surprising to see him so infatuated. It was like he was a teenager again, completely swept off his feet. When he first told us about her, we were happy for him. He deserved some happiness after the rough patch he had been through. But as the months went by, we noticed changes. He started spending more and more time away, always talking about her like she was the best thing that had ever happened to him. My brother and I started to get concerned. It wasn't just the distance, it was the way he talked about her. It was like he was blind to any flaws she might have. We met her a few times and something felt off. She was charming, sure, but there was a calculating edge to her that made us uneasy. We tried to voice our concerns to dad, but he brushed them off, saying we were just being protective. He believed she was his second chance at happiness. The whirlwind romance culminated in a lavish wedding. It was the kind of wedding you'd expect from a fairy tale, with no expense spared. My brother and I stood by, watching with knots in our stomachs. The reception was extravagant, with gourmet food and a live band. Everyone seemed happy, but we couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. Just two weeks into the marriage, the cracks began to show. The woman who had seemed so perfect revealed her true colors. She started making demands, first subtly, then blatantly. The will was the final straw. When she asked Dad to leave everything to her and cut us out, he finally saw her for what she was. It was a harsh wake-up call. The annulment was swift. Dad was devastated, not just by the betrayal, but by his own gullibility. He had always been so shrewd in business, yet he had been completely taken in by her. He threw himself back into work, but there was a sadness about him that wasn't there before. Story two. It was at a party when he choked me against a wall. We were surrounded by people, music blaring, lights flashing, and everyone seemingly having a good time. I laughed at another guy's joke, something so innocent, but he snapped. Before I knew it, his hands were around my neck, pressing me against the wall. I could see the fury in his eyes, a look I had seen before, but never this intense. People were passing by us, glancing our way, but not stopping. They just kind of looked and kept going, as if it was a normal occurrence or something they didn't want to get involved in. I was scared, gasping for air, and yet somehow, I was also embarrassed. Embarrassed that this was happening to me, that I had somehow let it get to this point. This wasn't the first time he had shown his anger. There had been other incidents, smaller in scale, but just as frightening. The yelling, the threats, the control. It all started so subtly that I didn't even realize what was happening. I made excuses for him, told myself it was just a phase, that he was stressed, that he loved me and would change. I was in denial for far too long. After that party, I began to see things more clearly, but it still took me time to fully wake up and break away. There were moments of clarity where I would think about leaving, but then he would apologize, sometimes with tears in his eyes, promising it would never happen again. And for a while it wouldn't. Things would be good, even great, and I would start to believe that maybe he had changed. But it was always temporary. The breaking point came one night when we were at home. It had been a good day. We had laughed and talked, and I almost felt like everything was normal. But then something triggered him, a comment I made, something insignificant, and he exploded. This time, there were no witnesses, no partygoers to glance and walk away. It was just us, and I was terrified. As he raged, I felt something inside me snap. I couldn't do this anymore. I couldn't live in fear, walking on eggshells, never knowing what would set him off. I realized that his apologies were just words, empty promises that never led to real change. 
I had to get out, not just for my own safety, but for my sanity. The next day, while he was at work, I packed a bag and left. I went to a friend's house, someone who had always been there for me, even when I pushed them away because of him. I told them everything, and they helped me see that I wasn't alone, that I didn't have to go back. Breaking away was one of the hardest things I've ever done. There were moments of doubt, times when I almost called him, almost went back. But I had to remind myself of the fear, the pain, the feeling of his hands around my neck. I had to stay strong, not just for myself, but for the person I wanted to become. Story 3 Back in the early 1980s, I served six years in the U.S. Navy. By 1986, an opportunity came knocking, a recruitment into the U.S. Army through a special program for technical and intelligence experienced military personnel to become warrant officers. The Navy was only offering me more sea duty, which didn't appeal to me anymore. This new deal seemed perfect, especially since I was engaged to a wonderful young lady three years my junior and had over $20,000 in savings. Everything was lining up perfectly. A new career, a promising family life, and the wedding went off without a hitch. After leaving the Navy, I had a three-month vacation planned before starting my Army training. It was supposed to be a smooth transition, but then my recruiter contacted me about an issue with my security clearance. My credit report didn't match my questionnaire. There were three credit cards with a $14,000 balance that I hadn't mentioned. It wasn't a delinquent debt, but I had to amend my answers to account for them. To my shock, I discovered my wife had opened a charge card at our bank and a couple of store cards around town. She had bought expensive clothes, jewelry, and the real kicker, a horse. She had taken riding lessons as a child and decided this would be her new hobby. The expenses piled up, the horse, riding gear, saddle and tack, vet bills, stable fees, and more. I ended up dumping a significant chunk of my savings to pay down these cards and amend my questionnaire responses. She came from a blue-collar family, good people who worked hard, but likely didn't discuss credit ratings and interest rates at the dinner table. I tried to explain the financial implications of her spending, the high interest rates, the long repayment periods, and how this debt could affect my security clearance and our future. I treated it as a bump in our relationship, but things got dark quickly. With my ship date approaching, I was facing an intense training schedule. Boot camp, AIT, airborne school, ranger school, warrant officer selection, and advanced training, 18 months of utter insanity. I was prepared, but a lot could go wrong. If I succeeded, I'd become a warrant officer. If I failed, I could end up a junior enlisted in a job they chose for me, possibly a line cook at some remote base. About a week later, I got a call about the horse. No one was taking care of it. The stable had covered for the sake of the animal, but now they were charging $350 a week for the extra services my wife was supposed to do. She was leaving our apartment daily, and I assumed it was to care for the horse, but apparently she was lawyer shopping instead. She wanted out and must have heard about the stable situation because she didn't come home that night. The next day, I was served with divorce papers. Total marriage time, 47 days. I was left with an apartment lease for four more months, no car, and a horse. I found a new home for the horse, but had to defer my ship date, and it took 14 months to settle the divorce. My security clearance was approved two days after the divorce papers were filed, and I shipped out the next day. I ended up with barely any clothes, working two minimum wage jobs, 14 hours a day, to pay off debt, lawyer's fees, and rent, sometimes skipping meals. At Fort Sill, Oklahoma, I spent two months mowing lawns as I awaited a training slot for boot camp. It wasn't the best time, but I was relieved to be moving forward. In airborne school, I met an ROTC cadet on her summer break. She had a year to go before her commission, and we hit it off. We spent holidays together, met between training, and enjoyed long weekends. When I finished my training and got my warrant, she flew across the country to give me my first salute. I gave her a silver dollar, as tradition dictates. Two months later, she received her commission, and I saluted her back, returning the silver dollar. We got married that Christmas and have been together for 31 years. Story 4 I knew a week after I got married that something was terribly wrong. We were at an ice cream shop, enjoying what was supposed to be a pleasant outing. But then he suddenly slammed my head into the wall. His reason? He thought he saw me looking at another man. The shock and pain were overwhelming. But the deeper sting came from the realization that the person I had married was not who I thought he was. I'm from the U.S., but we got married in England. We had a whirlwind romance that felt like a fairy tale. He was charming, attentive, and seemed genuinely in love with me. We met while I was traveling, and it all seemed so perfect. The classic love story where the American girl falls for the dashing Englishman. But everything changed right after we got married. In the days following the wedding, his behavior shifted dramatically. He became controlling, paranoid, and aggressive. It was like a switch had been flipped. The man who once made me feel like the most special person in the world now made me feel like a prisoner. I started to notice little things at first, how he would get angry if I talked to someone else, 
how he would check my phone, how he would make subtle accusations about my loyalty. It was unsettling, but I tried to brush it off as post-wedding stress or some cultural difference I didn't fully understand. But the incident at the ice cream shop shattered any illusions I had left. I wasn't just unsettled anymore, I was scared. I had never experienced such raw, physical violence, especially not from someone who was supposed to love and protect me. The force of his attack left me with a throbbing headache and a heart full of fear. People in the shop looked on, some with pity, others with indifference, but no one intervened. I felt utterly alone. I knew I had to get out of there. A couple of weeks later, I made my escape. It wasn't easy. He monitored my every move, questioned me constantly, and his mood swings were unpredictable. But I was determined. I started planning my departure in secret, slowly gathering my essentials and stashing away enough money for a ticket back to the U.S. One evening while he was out, I made my move. I grabbed my pre-packed bag and left. My heart pounded in my chest as I made my way to the airport, terrified he would somehow find out and stop me. But I managed to get on the flight, and the sense of relief I felt when the plane took off was indescribable. I was finally free from his control. Coming back to the U.S. was a mixed bag of emotions. I was relieved to be safe, but also devastated by how my dream had turned into a nightmare. I stayed with family initially, who were supportive, but shocked by what had happened. They had met him and thought he was wonderful. We all did. It took a long time for me to rebuild my life and my sense of self. I went through therapy to deal with the trauma and to understand how I ended up in such a situation. I learned about red flags and the patterns of abusive behavior, things I had been completely naive about before. Slowly, I started to heal. I found a job, made new friends, and began to see a future for myself that wasn't defined by fear and control. Story 5. I was completely blindsided by it. We had been living together for a year in a town about an hour from where I grew up. It was her idea to relocate to my hometown before our marriage, so we could be close to family when we eventually had kids. It made sense to me. It seemed like the right move for our future. We had a house we loved, a dog we adored, and jobs we were passionate about, or so I thought. We got married in October. It was a beautiful ceremony, filled with promises and dreams for our future. We settled into married life, and everything seemed perfect. But then came Labor Day weekend. She went to visit her sister, and I couldn't join her because of work commitments. I didn't think much of it. We had our own lives, and sometimes that meant spending time apart. When she returned the Tuesday after Labor Day, she sat me down and dropped a bombshell. She told me she was living a lie, living someone else's dream, and that she needed a divorce. I was in complete shock. I had no idea she felt this way. There were no signs, no fights, no hints that something was wrong. It felt like the ground had been ripped out from under me. We talked, or rather, she talked and I listened, stunned. She said she'd been feeling this way for a while, but didn't know how to bring it up. The trip to visit her sister had been a turning point. She had met someone, a friend of her sister's, and realized that her life with me was not what she wanted. It was like watching a movie where the plot takes a sudden, unbelievable twist. But this was my life. The divorce was finalized in January. It was a whirlwind of emotions and legal proceedings that left me reeling. I tried to understand, to make sense of it all, but it was like trying to grasp smoke. One moment we were planning our future, the next, she was gone. By September, she'd married the guy she met on that Labor Day trip. I couldn't believe it. How could everything change so quickly? How could she move on so fast? Life is wild sometimes. It's unpredictable and often unfair. I had to accept that her dreams had changed and they no longer included me. The months following the divorce were some of the hardest of my life. I had to rebuild from scratch in a town that now felt strange and empty without her. I kept the house and the dog. But every corner of that place held memories of us, making it both a sanctuary and a torment. Work was my escape. I threw myself into my job, finding solace in the routine and the distraction it provided. My friends and family rallied around me, offering support and a listening ear. They tried to comfort me, but it was hard to shake the feeling of betrayal and confusion. I replayed our last conversation over and over in my mind, trying to pinpoint where things went wrong, but it was like chasing shadows. Gradually, I began to find my footing again. I started going out more, reconnecting with old friends and making new ones. I took up hobbies that I had neglected during our relationship. I began to enjoy my own company again, finding strength in solitude. One day, I took the dog for a long hike in the woods near our home. It was a place we had loved to go together, but now it was just me and my loyal companion. As we walked, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. Life had thrown me a curveball, but I was still standing. I realized that I had been living someone else's dream too, caught up in a future that wasn't meant to be. I started to focus on my own dreams, on what I wanted out of life. I made plans to travel, to see places I had always wanted to visit. I considered going back to school to pursue a degree in something I was passionate about. I embraced the uncertainty of the future, knowing that while I couldn't control everything, 
I could control how I responded to it. Story 6. I found out she was sending Snapchats to a coworker. You know how it is, just a gut feeling that something wasn't right. One night, curiosity got the better of me, and I checked her phone. There they were, countless Snapchats, far too many to be innocent. My heart sank, but I needed to know the truth. Confronting her was a mixture of anger and heartbreak. She admitted it, saying she had been sleeping with him for months. That revelation hit me like a ton of bricks. We got divorced soon after. It was a dark time for me, full of anger and self-doubt. I kept questioning what went wrong, replaying every moment to see if I missed any signs. I went through the motions at work, barely sleeping, my mind constantly replaying the betrayal. Friends tried to pull me out of the funk, but it was hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It felt like life had dealt me a crushing blow and I was struggling to get back up. But life has a funny way of surprising you. Just when I thought I'd never recover, I met the girl of my dreams. We crossed paths in the most unexpected way, at a mutual friend's party. She had this infectious laugh and a smile that could light up a room. We started talking, and for the first time in a long while, I felt a spark of hope. She was kind, understanding, and had also been through her own share of heartbreak. We bonded over our shared experiences and slowly, I began to open up again. Our relationship blossomed and it felt different from the start. More genuine, more real. We supported each other through thick and thin, and I started to believe in love again. She showed me that not everyone is out to hurt you, and that true, honest love does exist. We moved in together, and it wasn't long before we got married. It was a small, intimate ceremony with close friends and family, a far cry from the grand spectacle of my first wedding. But it was perfect. It was real. Then, just two weeks ago, we welcomed our first child into the world. Holding my baby for the first time was a surreal experience. A mix of overwhelming joy and profound gratitude. I looked at my wife, the woman who had stood by me, and felt a deep sense of contentment. Life had come full circle. From the depths of despair, I had found a happiness I never thought possible. Being a father has given my life new meaning. Every little coup, every tiny hand grasping mine, fills me with a sense of purpose and love I can't even begin to describe. Those sleepless nights, the late night feedings, the diaper changes, they all seem insignificant compared to the joy of watching our baby grow and change every day. My wife and I often look at each other and marvel at how far we've come. From the ashes of a painful past, we built something beautiful together. It's incredible how life can change. Just a few years ago, I was at my lowest point, convinced that happiness was out of reach. Now I'm living a life I once only dreamed of. The journey wasn't easy and there were many times when I felt like giving up. But looking back, I realized that every painful moment led me to where I am now. The betrayal, the heartbreak, the loneliness, they were all stepping stones to a brighter future. Story 7. We had been dating for five years and everything seemed perfect. So when we finally tied the knot, I was convinced we were meant to be. But things took a turn during our honeymoon that made me question everything. It all started with a seemingly trivial argument over sunscreen. I have ginger skin, so sunscreen is a must for me. She, on the other hand, refused to wear any because she was worried about the chemicals. I couldn't understand her stubbornness on this. We argued about it for a good hour, and she refused to even join me in the pool because of the sunscreen. I thought it was ridiculous, but I didn't want to ruin our honeymoon over it. We went on a scuba adventure later, and she insisted on not wearing sunscreen. By the end of the day, her legs were so burnt she could hardly walk, while my skin was perfectly fine. Instead of accepting the consequences of her decision, she turned it around on me. She blamed me for not forcing her to wear sunscreen and claimed I ruined the honeymoon. It was a bizarre twist of logic that left me stunned. How could it be my fault when she made the choice not to protect her skin? It was then I realized I might have picked the wrong person. The sunscreen debacle was just the beginning. There were more arguments, each one more irrational than the last. She got mad at me over something she dreamed about, as if I had any control over her subconscious. Another time, she was furious because I didn't remind her to bring an umbrella. Even though it wasn't even raining when we left, each argument felt like I was being blamed for things entirely out of my control or responsibility. I tried to make it work. I really did. But I realized I couldn't stay with someone who constantly blamed me for their own problems. I was walking on eggshells, always waiting for the next outburst over something trivial or completely unrelated to me. It was exhausting and emotionally draining. Eventually, I had to call it quits. I couldn't imagine spending the rest of my life with someone who refused to take responsibility for their actions and consistently blamed me for everything that went wrong. The decision to end the marriage was tough, but it was also a relief. There were no kids involved, and I managed to get back everything I brought into the marriage, which made the process a bit easier. Looking back, I realized that sometimes people can hide their true selves for a long time. 
It took our honeymoon to uncover the extent of her irrationality and unwillingness to compromise or take responsibility. It was a painful lesson, but an important one. I learned that compatibility goes beyond shared interests and good times. It's about how you handle the tough moments and disagreements. Now I'm focusing on rebuilding my life and ensuring I don't make the same mistakes in the future. I've learned to recognize the red flags and to value my own well-being above staying in a toxic relationship. It's not an easy journey, but it's one that's necessary for my happiness and peace of mind. Story 8. This story isn't about me, but my friend's sister. She got engaged just eight months into her relationship and married four months later. Initially, everything seemed perfect. For the first five months, they were in that blissful newlywed phase. But then her husband started acting differently. He became withdrawn. His once enthusiastic good morning and good night kisses grew dull, and he stopped being chatty. Naturally, her sister grew concerned and repeatedly asked him if everything was okay. Each time, he'd respond with the same, I'm fine. She didn't want to push him, hoping he would open up when he was ready. She could sense something was off but decided to give him the space he seemed to need. One evening, after dinner, he finally said he wanted to talk about their relationship. Her heart raced with a mix of fear and anticipation. But before he could get the words out, he started crying. He cried for a few minutes, and she sat there, heartbreaking, waiting for him to find his voice. Finally, through his tears, he told her that he was. The revelation was a shock, but it also explained so much of his recent behavior. Her sister filed for divorce, understanding that they both needed to move on for their own happiness. After the divorce was settled, she wasn't angry with him anymore. She understood the difficult journey he was on and the courage it took for him to come out. In a remarkable show of empathy and strength, she went to see him and forgave him. They talked for hours, and she helped him become more comfortable with his. They rebuilt their relationship as friends, and she supported him as he came out to his close friends and family. It was a challenging time for him, but her unwavering support made a huge difference. Five years later, her sister is now engaged to another man and expecting their first child. She's found happiness again, and her experience with her ex-husband has only made her stronger and more compassionate. As for her ex-husband, he's now very happily married to a man, and they've been together for almost a year. Story 9. It all started when she went out for a girl's night and met a new friend named Nicole at a bar. At first, I thought it was great that she was making new friends and having some fun, but then things started to change. She began texting Nicole a lot and then hanging out with her now and then. I tried to be understanding, but something just didn't sit right with me. We had a baby at home, and it seemed odd that she was so eager to spend time with this new friend from another town over. Whenever I asked to meet Nicole, she'd get defensive and say it wasn't a big deal. Just a friend she met who she clicked with. She never gave me Nicole's last name, which felt strange. It wasn't like her to be so secretive. As time went on, she kept finding excuses to go out and hang with Nicole. I'd be at home, juggling our baby and feeling more and more uneasy about the whole situation. One night, after she left for another meetup, I decided to look through her phone. I know it wasn't the most honorable thing to do, but my gut was screaming at me that something was off. That's when I found out Nicole's real name was Wesley. My heart sank. It wasn't just that she was hiding the truth about who she was seeing. It was the betrayal and the lies that cut deep. Wesley wasn't some random friend. He was someone she had been secretly getting close to. Someone she was willing to risk our family for. When she came back that night, I confronted her. She was stunned that I found out, but she didn't deny it. She admitted that she had met Wesley at the bar, and they had been texting and meeting up ever since. She tried to explain that she felt trapped at home with the baby and needed an escape, but it felt like a flimsy excuse to justify the deception. We had a long, painful conversation that night. I asked her why she couldn't talk to me if she was feeling overwhelmed or trapped. She said she didn't know how to without feeling like a failure as a mother and a wife. It was clear that our communication had broken down long before Wesley entered the picture. The days that followed were incredibly tough. Trust was shattered, and we were both hurting. We decided to go to couples counseling to try and salvage our relationship to understand where things went wrong. The sessions were revealing, peeling back layers of resentment and unmet needs that we hadn't addressed. She eventually ended things with Wesley, realizing that the grass wasn't greener on the other side and that what she was truly missing was a deeper connection with me. We worked hard to rebuild our trust and to communicate better. It wasn't easy and there were times when I thought we wouldn't make it. But slowly, things started to improve. We found new ways to connect and support each other. I made an effort to be more present and involved, and she worked on being more open about her feelings and struggles. It wasn't a perfect process, and we stumbled along the way, but we were committed to making it work. Story 10. I had been fooling around with this girl for a while. From the start, I knew I didn't want anything serious. We were just having fun, no strings attached. Then, out of nowhere, my mom got terminated from her job. It hit me hard, sending me spiraling into a deep depression. 
During this tough time, the girl I was seeing was there for me. Her mom had passed away from cancer about a year earlier, and I guess we really bonded over our shared. It pushed us further emotionally than we ever should have gone. In a moment of vulnerability and emotional confusion, we ended up doing a courthouse marriage. At the time, it felt like the right thing to do. We were leaning on each other and found comfort in our shared pain. But within a month, I knew I had made a mistake. The initial emotions and support were blinding me to the reality of who she was and what our relationship really looked like. As the intense grief from my mom's death started to subside, I began to see the truth. She was incredibly unstable and our relationship was toxic. Instead of helping me climb out of my depression, she was pulling me deeper into it. Her erratic behavior and constant drama were more than I could handle. Every day felt like a new emotional battle, and I was losing myself in the process. But I didn't want to just give up and get divorced right away. I felt like I owed it to both of us to try and make it work, to see if we could find some semblance of a stable relationship. Marriage is supposed to be a commitment, and I didn't want to be the guy who ran at the first sign of trouble. So I stuck it out, hoping things would improve. Unfortunately, they didn't. Instead of getting better, our relationship deteriorated further. Every attempt to fix things seemed to lead to another argument, another meltdown. I was walking on eggshells, trying to avoid setting her off, but nothing worked. I was sinking further into depression, feeling more trapped and helpless with each passing day. After about 10 months of marriage, I couldn't take it anymore. We decided to divorce, and it was like a weight lifted off my shoulders. The immediate relief and happiness I felt confirmed that leaving was the right decision. I realized that staying in an unhealthy relationship was not only unfair to me, but to her as well. Marriage shouldn't be taken lightly. It's a serious commitment that requires mutual respect, understanding, and stability. But people also shouldn't force themselves to stay in relationships that are clearly unhealthy. We all make mistakes, and it's important to recognize when something isn't working and have the courage to move on. Story 11 my sister got a civil marriage, and everything seemed okay at first. But then they moved far away to the middle of nowhere because he landed a good job. My sister never finished college, and he would remind her of it daily, which really got to her. She became super depressed, but he never believed her. It was like he thought she was making it up or exaggerating. One time she got sick, and instead of being supportive, he told her that since she didn't go to the DMV that day, she wasn't allowed to go to the theme park we had planned to visit that weekend. It was just cruel and controlling. He constantly demeaned her, especially when she couldn't get a job or even an interview, despite applying to practically everywhere within a 50-mile radius. He called her stupid right in front of me once. When I called him out, he told me to mind my own business. If he wasn't twice my size, I would have decked him right there. It was infuriating to see my sister being treated like that. She deserved so much better. After about a year, she finally had enough and left him. It was clear to everyone that he was a raging, unpleasant person. When she left, he tried to manipulate her by saying she had nowhere to go and that if she went to stay with our mom, she would just be a burden like me. At the time, I was 19 and in college, working hard to make a future for myself, so his words were just another way to try and belittle us both. Thankfully, my sister got the car and the dog when she left. She moved back home and started to rebuild her life. It wasn't easy, but she had the support of our family. The experience left scars, but she emerged stronger and more determined to find happiness on her own terms. Looking back, it's clear that he was trying to break her spirit, but he underestimated her strength and resilience. My sister found a job, started taking classes to finish her degree, and began to heal from the emotional abuse. She also got involved in therapy, which helped her process everything she had been through and build a healthier outlook on life. In the end, my sister's experience taught us both valuable lessons about self-worth and the importance of surrounding ourselves with people who uplift us, not tear us down. It also made me even more grateful for our family's support and the bond we share. We've both moved on and grown from the ordeal, but it's a stark reminder of how toxic relationships can be if we let them persist. Now she's doing much better. She's found a job she loves, finished her degree, and even met someone new who treats her with the respect and kindness she deserves. As for me, I graduated college and started my career, always keeping in mind the importance of self-respect and never settling for less than what I deserve. Story 12 a cousin of mine divorced her husband after just six months. She realized she had to leave when we had to pick her up from her home after she had been recently beaten. It was a devastating moment for all of us, seeing her like that, bruised and broken. That day, we decided enough was enough. We packed up all of her stuff and vowed never to let her go back. When we arrived at her house, the atmosphere was tense. Her husband wasn't there, thankfully, which made it easier for us to move quickly. My cousin was visibly shaken, her eyes swollen from crying and her face marked with the evidence of his violence. We didn't waste any time. We gathered boxes, bags, and anything we could find to pack her belongings. Her priority was to get out safely, and we were determined to help her do that. 
As we packed, my cousin shared snippets of what had been happening. It was horrifying to hear. The abuse had started shortly after they got married, escalating from verbal assaults to physical violence. She had hoped it would get better, that he would change, but it only got worse. She felt trapped, scared, and isolated. The day he beat her so badly that she had to call us for help was the breaking. With each item we packed, it felt like we were reclaiming a piece of her freedom. Clothes, personal items, keepsakes, all reminders of her life that she needed to take back. There were moments of silence, punctuated by her quiet sobs and our words of reassurance. We kept telling her she was strong, that she deserved better, and that we were there for her no matter what. Once everything was packed, we loaded up the car and drove away. She left behind the nightmare of that house and the man who had caused her so much pain. As we drove, I could see the relief starting to wash over her, though the fear and trauma were still evident. It was going to be a long road to recovery, but the first step had been taken. We took her to our parents' house, where she would stay until she could get back on her feet. They welcomed her with open arms, providing the safe haven she desperately needed. Over the next few days, she began to relax, slowly opening up about her experiences. We listened, offered support, and helped her start the process of healing. The legal process of the divorce was grueling, but my cousin was resolute. She knew she couldn't go back, that her safety and sanity depended on cutting ties completely. With the help of a good lawyer and the support of our family, she navigated the legal maze and finalized the divorce. Watching her rebuild her life was both heartbreaking and inspiring. She went through therapy to deal with the trauma, slowly reclaiming her confidence and sense of self-worth. She got a job, started making new friends, and began to see a future that wasn't overshadowed by fear and pain. It's been a couple of years now, and my cousin has transformed. She's strong, independent, and much happier. She's even started dating again, cautiously, but with a newfound understanding of her worth. Her journey is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the importance of having a support system. Story 13. My mother-in-law, M.I.L., got married for the first time when she was really young. It seemed like a fairy tale at first, but it quickly turned into a nightmare. She left him a month later after discovering he was a raging alcoholic. It was a shock to her, as her family was super overprotective, and they were never really allowed to spend time together alone before they got married. Her family had always been strict, keeping a close watch on her interactions and ensuring she followed their rules. They believed in traditional values, and part of that meant minimal alone time with her fiancé before the wedding. They thought they were protecting her, but in reality, they were shielding her from the truth about the man she was about to marry. The wedding itself was a grand affair, filled with the usual pomp and ceremony. Everyone seemed happy and hopeful, thinking this was the start of a wonderful new chapter in her life. But behind the smiles and celebrations, there were secrets lurking. Her new husband managed to keep his dark side hidden until after they were married. In the first few days of their marriage, she started noticing things that didn't add up. His mood swings, the smell of alcohol on his breath at odd times, and his erratic behavior were all red flags. At first, she tried to dismiss them thinking maybe he was just adjusting to married life. But soon, the truth became undeniable. One night, after he came home drunk and started yelling at her for no reason, she realized she couldn't live like this. It was a terrifying moment, seeing this side of him that she never knew existed. She felt trapped and scared, knowing she had to make a decision quickly. She couldn't stay with someone who was so unpredictable and dangerous. The very next day, she packed a few of her belongings and left. She went back to her parents' house, heartbroken but determined to break free from the toxic relationship. Her family, initially shocked, soon realized the gravity of the situation and supported her decision. They helped her through the annulment process, ensuring she was safe and had a fresh start. Reflecting on her experience, my MIL often emphasizes the importance of truly knowing someone before committing to a lifelong partnership. Her story highlights how essential it is to spend quality time together, to see each other in different situations, and to really understand who the other person is. It's not enough to rely on superficial interactions or the perceptions of others. She eventually found love again with a man who respected her and treated her well. They spent ample time together before deciding to get married, ensuring they knew each other deeply and honestly. Their relationship was built on mutual understanding and trust, something she learned the hard way was crucial. Her first marriage was a painful lesson, but it taught her resilience and the importance of making informed decisions about relationships. She often shares her story to help others avoid the same mistakes. Spending time with someone, seeing their true character, and understanding their habits and behaviors are key to determining if they are a good partner. Story 14. Not a year, but about 18 months. She moved in with me, and from the start, she was constantly complaining that she didn't have friends. She felt isolated and lonely in the new environment. To help her out, she joined a local soccer team, and for a while, it seemed like things were getting better. But then she started talking about one teammate nonstop 
From the get-go, I had a bad feeling about it. My gut instinct was telling me something wasn't right. But every time I brought it up, she assured me they were just friends and would get defensive, accusing me of not trusting her. It got to the point where I thought I was going crazy. I began punishing myself mentally for being a bad husband and not trusting my wife. Despite my attempts to dismiss my suspicions, the nagging feeling wouldn't go away. Every mention of this teammate felt like a dagger, but I kept telling myself I was overreacting, that I was being paranoid. I didn't want to be the insecure husband who couldn't trust his wife. But deep down, I knew something was off. After months of feeling this way, I finally discovered the truth. She had been cheating on me with the teammate for months. The betrayal was like a punch to the gut. All those times she reassured, all those moments I doubted myself, it was all true. She had been lying to my face, and my worst fears were confirmed. To make matters worse, I started to piece together that this likely wasn't the first time. It dawned on me that she had probably messed around with someone else during our engagement. The realization was crushing. Everything I had built with her felt like a lie. We decided to split amicably, officially as of last week. Surprisingly, there was no mess, no drawn-out arguments or legal battles. It was almost a relief to have it end so cleanly. Thank God for that, at least. I didn't want to drag out the pain any longer than necessary. Now, looking back, I can see the red flags I ignored and the ways I convinced myself to stay. I learned a lot about trusting my instincts and the importance of honesty in a relationship. It's a painful lesson, but a necessary one. I've realized that a relationship without trust isn't worth staying in, no matter how much you love someone. I'm focusing on moving forward now. It's tough, and there are days when the betrayal still stings. But I know I'm better off. I've started reconnecting with friends and taking up old hobbies, trying to rediscover who I am outside of that relationship. Story 15. A cousin of mine married someone who seemed like the perfect woman. They both worked at the same store, and he often bragged about how quickly his wife was getting promoted within the company. It felt like they were building a promising future together, and he was proud of her accomplishments. A few months into their marriage, she told him she was going out with friends for the evening. It sounded innocent enough, so he didn't think much of it. But about an hour later, he received a call from one of his friends. His friend had seen her at a restaurant, not with her friends, but having dinner with the manager of the store where they both worked. The news hit him like a ton of bricks. Confusion and anger swirled as he tried to make sense of the situation. He waited for her to come home, trying to stay calm, but the betrayal was gnawing at him. When she finally walked through the door, he confronted her about what his friend had seen. She was caught off guard and tried to deny it at first, but the truth quickly came out. The confrontation was heated. He demanded to know why she had lied to him and why she was having dinner with the manager. She tried to downplay it, claiming it was just a business meeting, but he knew better. The trust was shattered and there was no coming back from that. That night marked the end of their marriage. The foundation they had built crumbled under the weight of her deception. He couldn't look at her the same way, knowing she had been dishonest and potentially jeopardizing their relationship for her own gain. In the days that followed, they tried to talk things through, but the damage was done. The love and admiration he once felt were replaced by distrust and resentment. They both knew the marriage was over. The betrayal was too deep to overcome, and they decided to part ways. My cousin was heartbroken, but he learned a valuable lesson about trust and honesty in relationships. He realized that no matter how perfect someone might seem, it's essential to have open communication and to be wary of red flags. It took time for him to heal and rebuild his life, but he eventually moved on, wiser and more cautious about whom he let into his heart. Story 16 Got married in late May, and by August or September, my world came crashing down. I found out from my dad that my husband, now ex, and my brother's wife were. She was also my bridesmaid at our wedding. The betrayal felt like a punch to the gut. She couldn't handle the guilt and confessed to my dad, who then had the heartbreaking task of telling me. Despite the shock and hurt, I forgave him like a fool. I wanted to believe that we could work through it, that it was a one-time mistake. But about a year and a half later, things took an even darker turn. We had moved from Florida to Washington, hoping for a fresh start. But one day I stumbled upon pictures on his phone. They were explicit and showed him with two different men in our house, and he was wearing my makeup. A lot of it. The shock of seeing those images made me physically ill. It wasn't just the cheating. It was the sheer deception and the use of our home, a place I considered a sanctuary. I felt like my whole marriage had been a lie, a facade hiding his true self and actions. We had uprooted our lives, moved across the country for what I thought was a new chapter, only to find out that he had been living a double life. The makeup, the encounters, it was all too much. I confronted him, and there was no denying it this time. He had been hiding this side of himself, lying to my face every single day. The divorce was inevitable. There was no saving the marriage after that. It was a relief to finally cut ties, but it was also incredibly painful. I had invested so much emotional energy trying to make things work, 
to trust him again after the first betrayal, only to be shattered by an even bigger one. Looking back, I see how naive I was to forgive him the first time. I wanted to believe in love and commitment, but I ignored the red flags in my own gut. It's been a wild ride, full of unexpected twists and painful revelations. Now I'm trying to rebuild my life and find stability again. It's not easy, and there are days when the anger and hurt resurface, but I'm determined to move forward. I've learned the hard way that trust is fragile and once broken, it's incredibly difficult to mend. Story 17 My brother passed away a week after our wedding. It was an incredibly tough time, filled with grief and sadness. Just two months later, my husband told me that my brother's death was too big of a thing to happen at the start of our marriage. He said it with a kind of finality that made my heart sink. It felt like he was already giving up on us. I tried for six more months. I really did. I threw myself into our relationship, hoping to bridge the gap that grief had created. I went to counseling, tried to communicate better, and did everything I could to make things work. But no matter how hard I tried, it felt like he had one foot out the door. The grief of losing my brother was compounded by the realization that my husband wasn't willing to stand by me through it. The more I tried, the more distant he seemed. He grew colder, more detached, and less interested in making things work. It was like he had made up his mind and was just waiting for me to catch up. Every effort I made felt like it was met with indifference or frustration. I was grieving and needed support, but instead I felt more alone than ever. After six months of trying to hold everything together, I realized I couldn't do it anymore. I was exhausted, emotionally drained, and heartbroken. It became clear that he wasn't going to change, and staying in the marriage was only hurting me more. I had lost my brother, and now I was losing my husband too, but the constant struggle was too much to bear. Giving up on the marriage was one of the hardest decisions I've ever made. I felt like a failure, like I was giving up on the vows we had made. But I also knew that I couldn't keep fighting for someone who didn't want to fight for me. I needed to take care of myself and start healing from all the pain. Leaving him was painful, but it was also a relief. I could finally focus on my own grief without the added burden of trying to save a failing marriage. I surrounded myself with supportive friends and family, and slowly, I started to find my footing again. Story 18. A couple of weeks into our marriage, something felt off. The close physical connection with my husband started to hurt, which seemed strange and unsettling. Trying not to panic, I decided to visit my OB to see what was going on. After a few tests, the doctor informed me that I had contracted chlamydia. My heart sank as the reality hit me. That's when I knew something was seriously wrong. Confronting my newlywed husband was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I hoped for an explanation that didn't involve betrayal, but deep down, I already knew the truth. When I finally gathered the courage to ask him about it, his face gave it away before he even said a word. He confessed that he had been having an affair with a co-worker for months, even before our wedding. The betrayal was like a dagger to the heart. Here I was, thinking we were starting our lives together, building a future, and all along, he had been deceiving me. The realization that he had put my health at risk on top of the emotional betrayal was almost too much to bear. I felt a mix of anger, hurt, and disbelief. How could someone who promised to love and cherish me do something so reckless and cruel? In the days that followed, I went through a whirlwind of emotions. I felt humiliated, used, and heartbroken. The man I thought I knew and trusted had shattered our vows and my trust in the most painful way possible. Every moment we had shared felt tainted by his lies. It was a struggle to get out of bed, to face the world knowing the person I married had been so deceitful. I decided to leave him. There was no way I could stay in a marriage built on lies and infidelity. The trust was gone, and without it, our relationship was nothing but a hollow shell. Packing my things and walking away was incredibly diff, but I knew it was the right choice for my own well-being. Moving forward was tough. I had to come to terms with the betrayal and the end of our marriage, while also dealing with the physical and emotional fallout of the affair. I sought support from friends and family, who helped me through the darkest days. Therapy became a crucial part of my healing process, allowing me to work through the pain and start rebuilding my self-esteem. As time passed, I began to feel stronger. I focused on my own health and happiness, rediscovering the things that brought me joy. I learned to trust my instincts and to value myself enough not to settle for anything less than honesty and respect in a relationship. Story 19. Best girlfriend I had to date, or so I thought at the time. I was in my late 30s, had never been married, and we had been dating for about a year before getting married. Shortly after the wedding, she asked to have her name added to all of my assets. My rental properties, our current house, financial investments, and even the cars. At first, it didn't seem like a big deal since we were married. But then she insisted it be done by that Friday, just two days away. I was swamped with work and had a deadline, so I told her I could start the process the next week. She pitched a fit, saying if I loved her, I would do it by Friday. This raised a red flag. I decided not to start the process immediately to see what would happen. She moved out of our bedroom into a guest room, 
got cold and distant around the house, and told me she would move back in once I finished getting everything done. This was nonsense, and I told her so. I went to my family lawyer for advice. She advised against putting anything in my wife's name at that point and suggested marriage counseling. My wife refused to go to counseling and continued living in the guest room. Following my lawyer's advice, I did nothing about the assets. After a year of marriage, on our anniversary, she told me I didn't have her in my heart. I thought to myself, this is nonsense. A week later, I told her I couldn't continue the marriage like this. She then asked, okay, so what are you going to give me? I consulted my lawyer about what a judge might decide regarding community property for the past year. The number came up to $20,000. I added another $20,000 to that amount and proposed it to her to keep things simple. I figured it would cost more in legal fees if things got ugly. It got ugly. A week later, I was served with papers. She was going after $750,000 for one year of marriage. It took another year of divorce proceedings and two years of property settlement proceedings. In the end, the judgment awarded her about $20,000 the amount for community property, but also awarded me attorney's fees. In net, she owed me about $30,000 and had to buy her own car. It turns out the judge, who had worked hard to become a lawyer and then a judge by the age of 40, was particularly pissed off by my wife's blatant attempt at a gold dig. Another attorney told me this judge rarely awards attorney's fees, but she felt it was justified in this case. Even though I came out okay financially, the experience was an emotional train wreck. It's been 15 years since it happened. For about two years, I wasn't dateable, but now I'm very happy with where I am and who I'm with. Edit. Wow, this reply really blew up. Thanks so much for the silver and gold. These are a first for me. Not sure how to find out who gave them to me so I can thank them directly, but I'll probably Google that. Lots of good comments. I'm trying to answer each question, but it might take me a while as I'm in Southeast Asia right now and will be heading to bed soon. Story 20. Not technically within a year, but when I returned from my first deployment, which lasted 10 months, I found out she had been sleeping with three of my buddies. The shock and betrayal were overwhelming. I had been looking forward to coming home, imagining a warm welcome, and instead I walked into a nightmare. I had trusted her completely, never once doubting her loyalty while I was away. During those long months, the thought of coming back to her was what kept me going. We had shared so many plans and dreams, and I believed in the future we were building together. Finding out she had been unfaithful with not one, but three of my friends shattered me. When I confronted her, she tried to deny it at first, but the evidence was undeniable. She eventually broke down and admitted everything. The excuses and apologies flowed, but they meant nothing to me at that point. The betrayal was too deep and the damage was done. I told her to pack her stuff and get out. There was no way I could stay with someone who had so blatantly disrespected our relationship. Seeing her pack her things and leave was surreal. It was like watching the life we had built together crumble before my eyes. The anger and hurt were compounded by the realization that my so-called friends had also betrayed me. These were people I trusted, people I considered brothers. To know they had taken advantage of my absence and betrayed me in such a way was a bitter pill to swallow. In the days that followed, I cut ties with those so-called friends. I couldn't bear to be around them, knowing what they had done. It was a lonely time, trying to process the betrayal and the loss of both a partner and friends. But I knew I had to move forward and rebuild my life. I threw myself into my work and hobbies trying to fill the void and distract myself from the pain. Slowly, I began to heal. I realized that the experience, as painful as it was, had taught me valuable lessons about trust and resilience. I became more discerning about who I led into my inner circle, valuing loyalty and integrity above all else. Story 21. Not me, but my dad. He got back from his honeymoon and went back to work, eager to start his married life. But when he came home that first day, something felt off. She wasn't there when he walked in which was unusual since she always got off work earlier than him and was always home when he returned. When she finally got back, he casually mentioned that it was strange she wasn't home and asked if she had gone somewhere. He wasn't accusatory, just curious. But she dodged his questions at first, which only made him more suspicious. After some pressing, she finally admitted that she had quit her job. When he asked why, she nonchalantly said she didn't need to work anymore. It hit him like a ton of bricks. She had planned on using him as her cash cow. He tried to remember exactly how the conversation went, but it was over 30 years ago. The essence of it was clear, though. She had no intention of contributing financially to their marriage and saw him merely as a provider. Dad was a reasonable man. He suggested counseling and asked her to get her job back, hoping they could work through this issue. But she brushed him off repeatedly, never taking him seriously. For seven months, he tried to fix things, putting in all the effort to make the marriage work. She, however, had no interest in meeting him halfway. Eventually, he realized he couldn't do it alone. Seven months of trying had worn him down. When he finally threw in the towel and decided to file for divorce, she suddenly started trying to fix things, 
but by then it was too late. The damage was done, and he had already given all he could. The divorce was a turning point for him. It was a tough decision, but ultimately, it set him on the path to achieving his lifelong dream. He reconnected with his middle school crush, my mom. They started dating, and before long, they were married. They've been together for 28 years now, stronger than ever. Their story is a testament to the importance of mutual effort and genuine love in a relationship. My dad learned the hard way that a marriage can't thrive if only one person is trying. His experience also taught me the value of finding someone who truly values and respects you. Reflecting on his journey, it's clear that leaving his first wife was a necessary step toward finding real happiness. My parents' marriage has been a solid example of partnership and commitment, built on mutual respect and shared values. Their love story began long before they officially got together, and it has endured for nearly three decades. For those who find themselves in similar situations, my dad's story is a reminder that it's okay to walk away from a relationship that isn't working, no matter how much effort you've put in. It's better to seek happiness and fulfillment than to stay in a situation that drains you. And sometimes life has a way of leading you to the right person when you least expect it. Story 22. Not me, but a female friend of mine knew about four to six weeks into her marriage that something was terribly wrong. Her husband had spent a few years before their marriage being quite the salesman to everyone, putting on a charming front that had everyone, including her, convinced he was the perfect partner. But once they were behind closed doors, his true colors began to show. They both had fast-moving careers and had been supportive of each other's professional ambitions. He seemed fine with her making money and having a career before they tied the knot. But soon after the wedding, his traditional marriage roots really came out. He expected her to handle all the domestic chores, cooking, cleaning, taking care of the dogs, while he did nothing to contribute around the house. Every evening, he would come home, pound drinks until dinner time, and then act like it was perfectly normal for her to manage everything else. He wouldn't lift a finger to help. The charming, supportive partner she thought she married was gone, replaced by someone who expected her to shoulder all the responsibilities of their household, despite both of them working full-time. She tried to address it with him, bringing up the imbalance and how overwhelmed she felt. His response was dismissive at best, outright hostile at worst. He believed it was her role as a wife to take care of everything at home, no matter how busy or stressed she was from her job. The more she tried to talk about it, the more entrenched he became in his outdated beliefs. Realizing she couldn't live like this, she began to see that he had essentially deceived her. The man she thought she knew had hidden his true self behind a facade, and now she was paying the price. The constant arguments and his refusal to change wore her down. She started feeling trapped in a situation where her own needs and career aspirations were being undermined by his rigid and selfish expectations. After a few more weeks of trying to make it work, she reached her breaking point. She saw that this was not the partnership she had envisioned and that staying would mean sacrificing her own happiness and sense of self. With a heavy heart, she decided to leave him. The marriage, though brief, had taught her a valuable lesson about the importance of truly knowing someone before making such a commitment. She moved out and filed for divorce. The relief she felt afterward was immense, despite the emotional turmoil of ending her marriage so soon. She realized she deserved a partner who saw her as an equal and who would support her both professionally and personally. Since then, she's been doing much better. She focused on her career, built a new support system of friends and family, and even adopted another dog. She's cautious but hopeful about the future and knows now to trust her instincts and ensure her next relationship is built on a foundation of mutual respect and shared values. Story 23 I knew it was a mistake about two months into our engagement. Something just didn't feel right. I actually broke up with her for a week, but I didn't tell anyone except my parents. During that week, she begged me every single day to get back together. I felt guilty and eventually caved in, thinking maybe I was overreacting. We pretended like the breakup never happened and went ahead with our plans, getting married nine months later. Things seemed fine for a while, but just over a year into our marriage, she ended up cheating on me. It blindsided me. I couldn't understand her logic behind begging me to get back together, only to betray me not even two years later. It's something I'll never fully comprehend. The pain of her betrayal was intense. I replayed our relationship over and over in my mind, trying to pinpoint where things went wrong. It felt like I had been living a lie, building a future on shaky ground. I couldn't help but wonder why she wanted me back so badly if she didn't value our commitment. After discovering her infidelity, we separated, and the divorce process began. It was a tough period, filled with anger, confusion, and sadness. I questioned my judgment and felt the weight of my earlier doubts. The guilt of not following my instincts earlier added to the emotional turmoil. But as they say, time heals all wounds. I took things one day at a time, focusing on rebuilding my life. 
I leaned on friends and family for support, and gradually, the pain started to fade. I threw myself into my work and hobbies, rediscovering passions I had neglected during the marriage. The healing process was slow, but eventually I felt ready to open my heart again. I met an amazing woman who understood my past and respected my journey. We took things slowly, building a strong foundation of trust and mutual respect. We've been married for a couple of years now, and we're planning to start a family soon. It's something I would have never imagined after what happened with my ex. This new chapter in my life is filled with hope and happiness, and it's a testament to the fact that things do get better. To anyone going through a rough patch, know that healing is possible. It might not seem like it now, but with time and effort, you can rebuild and find joy again. Trust your instincts, believe in yourself, and take things one day at a time. Life has a way of surprising you when you least expect it. Story 24. I knew it was a mistake even before we got married. A few months before the big day, I started feeling like something was off. I spoke about it with my family, expressing my doubts and concerns. I told them it didn't feel right, but they assured me it was just cold feet and that everything would be fine once we were married. So, against my better judgment, I went through with it. The wedding day came and went, and for a brief moment I hoped they were right. Maybe it was just nerves and things would settle into place. But as the weeks turned into months, the nagging feeling in my gut only grew stronger. I felt miserable, trapped in a relationship that didn't bring me joy or fulfillment. We tried to make it work, but deep down, I knew it was a losing battle. Almost a year later, I couldn't take it anymore. The constant unhappiness was wearing me down, and I realized I had to make a change for my own well-being. I made the difficult decision to leave. It was an absolute cow storm, messy, emotional, and full of conflict. We argued, there were tears, and the separation was far from amicable. Leaving wasn't easy. There were moments when I doubted myself, wondering if I was making the right choice. The fear of judgment and the potential fallout weighed heavily on my mind. But as soon as I made the decision, a sense of relief washed over me. I knew deep down that I was doing the right thing. The aftermath was chaotic, but ultimately it was worth it. I started to feel like myself again, rediscovering the things that made me happy. The freedom to live my life on my own terms was exhilarating. I reconnected with old friends, pursued hobbies I had neglected, and slowly began to rebuild my life. The experience taught me the importance of trusting my instincts. If something doesn't feel right, it's crucial to listen to that inner voice, even if others tell you otherwise. I also learned that it's okay to prioritize your own happiness and well-being. Staying in a situation that makes you miserable doesn't benefit anyone in the long run. Now, looking back, I'm grateful I had the courage to leave. It wasn't an easy journey, but it was necessary. I've grown stronger and more self-assured because of it. My life is now filled with genuine happiness, and I'm in a much better place emotionally and mentally. Story 25. It all came to a head on the wedding day. He was angry, and his family was outright abusive to my side for not doing enough to entertain them. They had expected a dowry and lots of gifts, typical in some traditional Indian weddings, and since our arrangements didn't meet their expectations, they made my life a living hell for a month. Right from the start, the atmosphere was tense. I had hoped for a day filled with joy and celebration, but instead, it was marred by constant complaints and demands. His family's behavior was beyond rude. They were hostile and condescending. My family tried their best to accommodate, but nothing was ever good enough. The first few weeks of marriage were a nightmare. My husband, who should have been my partner and support, mirrored his family's behavior. He was constantly angry, taking their side and blaming me for every little thing. There was no peace at home. The constant pressure and negativity were overwhelming. Every day felt like a battle, and I was losing myself in the process. One month into this misery, I had an epiphany. This wasn't the life I wanted. I didn't deserve to be treated this way, and it was clear things weren't going to improve. My mental and emotional health were deteriorating, and I realized I had to take control of my situation. It wasn't too late to put an end to this toxic relationship, so I made the decision to leave. It was a difficult choice, but it was necessary. I told my husband that I couldn't continue living like this, and I left. The relief I felt was immense, even though the path ahead was uncertain. I moved back in with my parents, who supported my decision wholeheartedly. They had seen the toll this marriage had taken on me and were relieved that I had chosen to leave. Rebuilding my life was challenging, but it was also empowering. I focused on my career, my hobbies, and my well-being. Therapy helped me process the trauma and regain my confidence. I reconnected with friends and built a supportive network around me. Looking back, I'm proud of the decision I made. It taught me the importance of standing up for myself and not tolerating disrespect or abuse. I learned to trust my instincts and prioritize my happiness and well-being. I also realized that cultural expectations shouldn't dictate my life choices, especially when they compromise my dignity and peace. Now I'm in a much better place. I've found happiness and fulfillment on my own terms. The experience, though painful, made me stronger and more resilient. 
I know what I deserve in a relationship and will never settle for anything less than mutual respect and love.